Roll call. Mayor Hicks. Present. Councilor Reynolds. Here. Councilor Vasquez. Here. Councilor Lucero. Here. Councilor Pia. Here. Please join me in the prayer of Jesus. Fred, you can just stay standing up, bro. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the agenda. Take the motion to approve the agenda. Second. The second. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor Vasquez? Councilor Lucero? Yes. Councilor Claudia? Yes. Yeah. yes. Citizens to address the council. Mr. Lewis. Mr. Mayor, Madam Manager, City Councilors. As you know, a couple weeks ago, as you probably know, a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a high-speed pursuit that started on I-40 and um, came into our town and ended up in my master bedroom. Destroyed about half of my building. It happened at 12.20 in the afternoon. And uh, as you know, our school lunch program is happening in the park over there every day every every day during the week there were between i don't know how many but i know there was probably over a hundred children and adults in that park if it hadn't been for my building standing there we would have had a funeral for about 10 kids and adults last week instead of me busting my butt over there cleaning up that mess our law enforcement I won't go there. What I would like to see is for the city to adopt a policy that when a high-speed pursuit begins on I-40, that we do everything in our power with our local law enforcement, the city and the county, to stop, to not let a high-speed pursuit come into our town. If I got a suggestion on that, because I'm with you, Mike. I, I told the sheriff and I told my lieutenants, I told my chief of police, when they enter our town driving like that, we need to shoot them. Do these <laughs> stop them? Does anybody in this room think that that woman was going to stop and get gas and go to the bathroom? She came into this town and everyone knows that she was going to break our uh, traffic laws and that she was going to speed. And yet we let her come into our town. I think if we would have had a, a flashing red light at the exit over there, there's only two ways to get in grants from Albuquerque. They knew for an hour that she was coming. The chatter was on the uh, radio. The state police were talking about it. They knew that she was coming, and yet they let her come into our town. If she hadn't hit my building, she would have hit every, anybody that was in that park. And I'd like to see us adopt a policy, the city and the county, and let the state police know when they start a high-speed pursuit on I-40 that they're not coming into our town. If they would have had a car parked down, it, there's only two exits or coming into our town, the old 66 and uh, 85. And if we would have had a flashy light there on car, I don't think she would have come in. I think she would have kept going. You keep them on I-40 till they run out of gas. <laughs> I think it should be a statewide policy. No community wants a person to come into town. I've heard estimates, I don't know what the law enforcement's going to say, but I've heard estimates from 60 miles an hour to 120 miles an hour coming down Route 66 in the middle of our town. Some people's lines you can't affect, Mike. I mean, she was going to do that. No matter what we do, unless we shoot that person. And I'm about that, okay? Because all we're doing is jeopardizing our public when we don't. I'm with you. There's got to be a way to stop them out there. A flashing red light, that wouldn't have stopped her. She came through town on her on her rims. They had already spiked belt her and everything. Right. You can I drive mean, 60 miles an hour. You bet you. 
There's a way to stop them. And I, I mean, that's the policy we need to adopt, and they'll quit doing that crap in our town. Period. Well, we at least need to raise the stakes a little bit. Even if we have to sacrifice a couple cars, that's why we buy insurance. Well, but letting somebody come into our town, if she didn't kill somebody in the park, she would have killed somebody else. We're very lucky she didn't kill somebody, Mike. Right. And uh, I'm sorry that happened to your building. Council got it in. I'm with you, okay? A high speed pursuit needs to be taken care of right now. Before it gets here. Before it ever gets into any town. And the state police just handed it off to us. Like, here's any your town. problem now. You deal with it. And we didn't pursue, didn't did we, Lieutenant? It. We sir. didn't pursue her, did we? No, sir. Yeah, well, we, because we're not going to do that, Mike, because all we're doing is jeopardizing everybody. But so what we should have done is we should have put cars out there and stopped it. I'm with you. When there's a flashing red light and a siren behind you, even if you're going 20 miles an hour, you feel pursued. She was feeling pursued no matter how fast she was going. People's minds like that. There's just evil in the world. Yeah, you know, it's like people, I mean, and I hate to get on it, but with gun control. You can't legislate evil out of somebody's mind by taking people's guns. You can't do it. Now, you can stop evil by having a good guy with a gun. You bet you. It works all the time. So, I mean, I'm about that, Mike. I'm with you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Mike. Mike's the only one that signed in. Is there anybody else here out there who wants to talk? Because I will let you talk. This is America. Okay, let's get to it then. Uh, public comment and discussion on our charter. We are not in compliance with the charter. Uh, hopefully after the next election we will be. Uh, approval of the... This is marked as a special city council meeting, guys. It really wasn't a special city council meeting. We just moved the council meeting to the budget. Okay, so... I wasn't here. If there's any corrections to the meeting minutes, you guys will have to take care of that. And if there's no corrections, I'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes, not special meetings, so we'll change that in the next one. Okay? Our meeting minutes from May 30th, 2019. I make a motion we approve the special meeting for 530 2019. Second. Second. Councilor Reynolds? <laughs> Uh, yes, you were. This is when we did the budget. Oh, that yes. was? Oh, yes. Yes. Manny, Rick? Yes. Fred? Yes. Okay, the next one is, uh, this was the special city council meeting minutes for one agenda item, which was Second Street and all that good stuff. There were three of us present. Um, I didn't see any corrections on it. And I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I make a motion to close the city council meeting for 6 12 2019. Second. Second. Council Reynolds? <clears throat> I wasn't present. Yes. Manny? Rick? I wasn't present. Fred? Yes. And I vote yes. Cemetery Advisory Board. Ms. Tina? Hi. <laughs> are, are we full oh. yet? <laughs> Not yet. Are we close? Almost. Um, I just want to thank you all for approving my application. And uh, just an update, plots in the new section F should be ready to be sold soon. They just have to mark the water lines. Resurve resurveying is not necessary. Section F should accommodate an estimated 300 graves. There are no driveways available yet, only a walking path on the outer edge. The crew at the cemetery is also working on elevating and aligning the headstones one section at a time. Sod has been ordered and will be placed on approximately 20 graves with burials from January to present. Within the next few months, a discussion regarding redesign of plans for the next five-year plan will take place. And since June 22, 2018, there have been 77 burials. Any questions? Questions. <laughs> so the, the cemetery board has been discussing the possibility of raising fees. We, we realize we're not charging what it even cost us to do a burial. And so we've been researching what other communities our size are charging. So uh, I anticipate soon there will be a recommendation before the council to raise the fees <coughs> slightly. 
Right, and we'll take care of that in, at the next meeting. And then present it. I'll get too big of her. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you for the Thank work you. you do Thank for you. the city team. Thank, Thank you very much. Chris, Parking Director's Report. Good evening. Some of the things that I wanted to cover this evening is on our advertising that we are doing. This year I'm hoping to advertise in a few different markets. One of them would be Texas Monthly. The other is the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. And we would send flyers out to every single camper that has a camping RV there. Um, this year we are also in Guest Life, which is something new for us. Our neon arch totals, I don't have a complete list of all the totals, but we have had quite a, a decline over this last year, and I'm not certain as to why. That's the reason we need to boost our advertising area. In the film news, we did pass the ordinance for being a film-friendly community um, within the county, and then we also passed the resolutions for the city and the village of Milan. Uh, we were added to the tourism website and also to the brochure they send out. I did put one of those on each one of your uh, chairs. I've been working with the film office to register us as a film-friendly community with new locations. We've added new locations, also updated locations. And then also we have uh, uh, added new businesses that are film-friendly. We do now have hotels that are film-friendly film here in Grants. Um, I attended the Film Liaison Conference and volunteered at the film day uh, at the state capitol representing the city, the county, and the village. I sent a welcome letter to the new director of the New Mexico film, Todd Christensen, as well as Cabinet Secretary for Economic Development, Alicia Keys. And this has provided, been fruitful for us as we've gotten a few leads on some upcoming films, hopefully. During the last legislative session, they passed Senate Bill 2, which increased the film payout, and they have paid out in arrears $100 million in the last few weeks. All of that went where? I'm sorry? All of that went where? It went to the film crews. It went to California. Well, That's where it, it did, but All of it. it brought, it, it brought people here to do filming, which helps our economy. In 2017, there were 61 productions here in New Mexico, which brought in $5.5 million in revenue to our state. Uh, in 2018, there was $234 million brought into our state with 38 films. That's direct spending within our, <coughs> our state. Hopefully we'll get film here in Cibola County, the city of Grants, and we'll be up there with them. I believe Senate Bill 2 says that that money can't be spent outside of a 53-mile radius yeah. at Albuquerque 76. No, it does not. Uh, Harry's looking into that, okay? Because um, there's something in there about these films that they have to stay. Well, I know they pay the film credits in... in yes. Okay, so check, I want what, hear, hear me, here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to get with Harry, with Representative Garcia, and I want you to help him press this to draft legislation or whatever it takes to get that bill money expanded throughout the state <coughs> and not just in that Rio Grande corridor where it is right now. Right. Rio Grande corridor in California is where all that money's going. All us little rural communities, we ain't seen a dime of it yet. Not a dime. We did back when they made 21 grams, right. okay? And, and I, I, I seen that, I watched him film that, okay? Yeah. But what I want you to do is get with Harry and press it. I mean, you're doing a, one heck of a job, period. I mean, <laughs> hear that right now out of my, from my mouth to your ears. Thank you. And I appreciate what you're doing, hands down. But now I want you to do a little more, okay? Uh, uh, 
Harry was supposed to come and see me, and he didn't show up for our meeting. And I so did, keep calling him. I did email him <laughs> and call him, and I did send him a letter with what I have been doing, and a synopsis and timeline as what's because been he's happening. Very, very, very see. interested in this, and I, why? Yes, we're and, not getting any of the money over here, and I'm very interested in that too because when you start talking a hundred million dollars right. being sent out to every place else. And we ain't getting a share of that. And we're only 70 miles away. Come exactly. On. We got some beautiful areas around here to film. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, so, we do. Please continue. Uh, the worker days for 2017, there was 448,304 days that people worked here in New Mexico. For 18, the totals were down to 259,961. San Juan County Commissioners voted a million dollars to build a film studio. I have brought that up to uh, Commissioners Windhorse and Torres and also to Representative Garcia that we would love to see a studio here in Grants. We're close, you know, Farmington's a long ways away. Uh, if they needed something out of, out of Albuquerque for some reason or something from a studio in Albuquerque, it's a lot further to travel. Uh, Netflix and NBC announced that they are opening studios. Uh, NBC Universal has said they will spend $10 billion, $10 billion in the next 10 years in Albuquerque. Uh, there is a film crew event advancement program. I have wrote to Dr. Best requesting a meeting to meet with him because I would like to see filming uh, classes they do offer that at New Mexico State at Las Cruces, and I would like to see us have a few classes here also. The next thing that I've been working on is trying to recruit businesses to come to the city of Grants. I have sent out over the last eight months probably a close to 900 letters. I've sent letters to coffee shops, optometrists, home improvement, home decor, shoe stores, clothing stores, sporting goods, chain restaurants, credit unions, pet food stores, and veterinarians. I did meet with a sporting goods store when I was in Silver City for CDT days and possibly have some interest from them. I'm going to meet with them again next month when I am down there. And any other questions I can answer for anybody? Council? Anything? I do. Okay. Any, any, any nibbles on the optometrists? Not yet. Any nibbles on the veterinarian? Not yet. I sent to every optometry school in the United States of Puerto Rico. Um, a couple of them wanted me to pay to advertise. Uh, some did post it for us, and I will continue every semester to send out that letter to all of them, even if they wanted me to pay. Veterinarian schools, I did the same. I also hit there and I also called my cousin who works for Texas A&M. They have a huge veterinarian school and contacted their dean and he has said he would post the information. But Thank you. That's all I've got. Uh, Texas Tech is starting a veterinarian school. I just read that in a lot of paper the other day. So that's a little closer. I have one other thing. Sure. I go to the, I know this is small, but we do marketing. And a number of times at the dog park, people have been passing through. And there isn't apparently anything on the city website about the dog park. Okay. And people, a lot of people travel with their dogs. And I they do. check you know, for dog parks. There's dog know. parks in Gallup and dog parks in Albuquerque, but there isn't anything that says there's a dog park here. <laughs> one man traveling with his two working shepherds found the dog park through word of mouth okay. and was very happy with the dog park and, you know, although I complained about the dog park a lot, 
compared to other even cities, our dog park ranks right up there. Yes, it's a very nice dog it's park. It's a very nice dog park. And right? I will add that to our website. Yeah, because people and are passing through and add this is the dog park right. is an asset that should be utilized. And I'll also add it to our app. Okay. Well, thank you. So. Any other questions? I do. Yes. Um, what are some of the other cities doing to attract the film industry to their... Well, mm -hmm. having a lot of locations, that has helped a lot. Like I said, a lot of our locations were, were very <coughs> meal. When we first started doing this back in 2017, there was only 15 locations listed for grants in Seaboy County on our website. And on so the is that on website. the state's website? Yes, on the state's website. So, so businesses can get on there and register and say, you know, I have this service available, I can do catering, um, I can do laundry, those kind of things. So she's been working with local businesses yes. to try to register. And I've been going door to door. Um, I've been going out and taking pictures and updating pictures for the different uh, businesses that are around and interesting buildings that are around, uh, you know, even the outside of a building can be interesting to, sure. to yeah. some. And, you know, we've got that unique area because we've got beautiful terrain, but not only that, we have unique buildings. I mean, you can be a 1950s building or you could take the county building over here and be a Spanish something. You know, there's so much that could be done. Thank you very much, Chris. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Chief, there. You're up, buddy. Oh, okay. And before you get started, I want to say I had a couple of interactions with people that you are recognizing today. And I want you to know that I am so pleased with the way they treated my mom, their professionalism, the way they made her feel comfortable, everything that went down. My mom said she'd never seen so many uniforms in her house, even though she didn't recognize Andrew, which she calls Anthony, Valencia. She's always called him Andrew from her dad, okay, from his dad. Um, and that's what really scared us when she didn't recognize him. True. Um, but they did one hell of a job. I am so proud of our fire department and our police department. And I want you to hear that now from my mouth to your ears before the chief gets to go. Go ahead, chief. Well, mayor, counselors, city manager, staff, and audience. I'm here this evening to make some presentations that we should do more of. On March 8th, 2019, approximately 16.58 p.m., we were dispatched to a gunshot victim at the east end of Roosevelt, specifically on Encino. We heard en route that the scene became secure by Grants Police, Officer Lucero and Sanchez, but we needed to get there as soon as possible. Upon arrival, Grants Fire Rescue personnel began to assess Mr. Neil Garcia, who was gravely injured with a gunshot wound to his head. They were able to place him on a gurney and begin the task of evaluating his injury. Superior ambulance arrived shortly thereafter and began their assessment. And they were able to place him in the back of their ambulance and start administering emergency procedures to keep him alive to Cibola General Hospital. EMT Haberger and EMT Boyd were able to establish IVs, oxygen, etc. while EMTs Valencia and Mays assisted with vitals along with Lieutenant Spidell from the Cibola County Sheriff's Office. All of this happened in a span of 18 minutes as the transports of Spola General began at 7.15 with arrival at the hospital at 7.16. Remember, the original call began, began at 16.58. These responders stayed at Cibola General Hospital and helped in the ER to release at 18.31. These first responders from four different agencies all worked to keep Mr. Garcia alive and to the emergency room of Cibola General where further measures were able to sustain him until he was taken to a trauma center in Albuquerque by critical care ambulance. Unfortunately, Mr. Garcia succumbed to his injuries a day later, but these individuals were able to give his family one more day with him to at least say goodbye. 
I'd like to mention that uh, Officer Brian Sanchez is not with Grand Speed anymore, but he's now with New Mexico State Police. But it is my honor tonight to present the following individuals with some of these life-saving medals. So, if I could have Lieutenant Andrew Valencia, Grand Spire Rescue. Lieutenant Mike Mays, Grand Spire Rescue. Lieutenant Maxine Spidell, Savona County Sheriff's Office. Patrolman Robert Lucero, Grants Police Department. EMT David Haberger of Superior Ambulance, and EMT Nathaniel Boyd, also of Superior Ambulance. Could come forward, please. Don't look so solemn, you're not gonna be shot. <laughs> you know the mayor said so. You know what, guys? <laughs> Smile, you're doing a hell of a job, and I appreciate it, man. That's a hell of a Period. Job. I really do appreciate that. You do not realize. You open these up and look at these if you The crap we went through. <laughs> and you guys made it so much easier. Appreciate your support. Now in the Marine Corps, they send you back to the front. So. Well, you're going to go back to the front. <laughs> so, the audience is here. Please congratulate these five out of six. One couldn't make it this evening. These are your heroes of your community. They literally came together, four different agencies, to try and save this poor man who had been shot. So please, when you think you hear the sirens in the middle of the night, two in the morning, three in the afternoon, this is what they do. So again, I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. board with him tonight. I spoke to all four of these gentlemen. They're doing one heck of a job out there along with Ray. They all want to be reappointed and therefore there's my recommendations. And we'll start with Mr. Dick Coffin first. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve Mr. Coffin to the advisory board. Make a motion to approve Mr. Cocker to that. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The next one is Mr. Butterfield. Thank you for what you guys are doing out there. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve Mr. Butterfield. I'll make a motion to approve uh, Rory Butterfield to the uh, first one. Rise report, second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next one is Mitch, Mr. Richard Best. Aye. Aye. I appreciate it. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And the last one is Mr. Randy Matt. I make a motion to appoint Randy Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any questions for the board or Ray while we got him here, guys? Good job. Thank you guys for what you do. We appreciate it. Les Gaines. Yes, sir. I believe you brought a letter and all kinds of good stuff for us, right? Congratulations. Yeah, folks. Yeah, you betcha. Come on. You know, I just received this last week. I don't have the original copy. It's uh, in the post office. So, I'm sort of fine. I'll send you This is exciting news. I hope you have a I've got a copy. I got a copy. Thank you, Les. I took it to my Energy and Minerals Committee meeting on Saturday. So, I thought it would be a big deal to start. So that, uh, that is a letter from uh, Steve Hotbach, who is our regional Forest Service Supervisor. Is this the same one? Yeah, it is. You Forest it. Service Supervisor. Come on, okay. man, don't let kick your butt. It's oh. going to, because I don't see it out on off switch. It's on. It's on. Testing, okay. <laughs> so it's uh, our... He's got to get closer to it. Our regional Forest Service Supervisor supporting the, uh, uh, the impact, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, evaluation and funding for that. So you might read that. That's kind of exciting. It's a big step. And then Milan, uh, last Thursday night, passed a very similar resolution 
and put the uh, the road listed as either six or seven on their ICIP list. So if you have any questions, I can answer those if you. I might be able to. I'm not sure. Um, I brought this up Saturday in the Energy Natural Resources Committee here is over in over in Alfred. and everybody statewide is all about it. They're they're they like the idea. They said it will bring more people, especially the people in this corner of the state. We're all behind it. Believe it or not, even the people in the Rio Grande corridor, Taos blew me away. How many of them were, were would support this? Mm -hmm. So, so far, we've had about 39 individual meetings or public meetings. Uh, started uh, nearly three years ago with this. I think there's we I did the presentation here in front of the city council, kind of kicked it off, and then uh, uh, the amount that was any amount of collaborative was involved, the uh, economic development, uh, civil economic development, and then we've had a number of private meetings. And um, I think if we pursue this in the right direction with a lot of respect and and uh, you know respecting the mountain as a sacred area, we can move forward. And I know we can. I mean, the tribes have already said, cool. So let's make it happen. Any questions for Mr. Gaines? No. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 191635 to support public improvement of the roads of the Moscow I'll make a motion to approve resolution 19 1635. I second. So this is for a feasibility study. Yes. Am I okay? Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Les, for all you do. Resolution 19, 1634 LGRF program. <clears throat> Mayor, Council, how are you? Good, good. How did the girls do? 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two? Yeah. It's better than 1-3. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all right. Times. We were recently awarded uh, a LGRF program uh, funding for our Phase 2 of the 2nd Street Channel. Uh, not as much as we had applied for, but <coughs> something better than nothing. It's kind of one of them things. And for sure enough for another bridge into the high school. So anyway, part of the requirement is to have a res resolution in support of the agreement, and that's what's before you. Questions? Councilor Reynolds? No. Manny? No. Rick? No. Fred? No. I'll entertain a motion on resolution 16, or 1916-34. I'll make a motion for resolution 19-1634. Second. I second. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor Vasquez? Councilor Lucero? Yes. Councilor Padilla? Yes. All right. Next one. Public entity sale. Yes. On July 10th, the uh, New Mexico Department of Transportation is having a public auction. Uh, cities and towns are invited. Anyway, there are uh, several items that we are interested in or that we need. Uh, Speaking to Mark and Laura, the road department is in need of a uh, salt spreader and two dump trucks. And uh, the public auction, from what I understand, you get some pretty good deals, but we'll find out here pretty quick if approved. Uh, anyway, the purchase order is, the, the request is 60000 I'd be surprised if we got even close to that amount. From what I understand, you could get a dump truck like for five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, something like that. But, I mean, don't quote me on the price or anything. <laughs> don't but, hold you to it. Yeah, don't hold you to it. <laughs> we'll hold Mark to it. It's an auction. <laughs> we'll hold Mark to it. <laughs> we'll hold Mark to it. We'll hold Mark and Laura to it. <laughs> anyway, we will we will shop smart. So any questions? Are you any gonna go questions? there? I do I, Mark, are you gonna go there and, and check these vehicles out? Yes sir, we plan Before to take our, our oh, fleet yeah. manager, mechanic, and check out all the vehicles for soundness. Because so, I've been to these. Yes sir. Let me tell you, yeah. you some with bad legends. deals and some good deals. You're gonna know what the heck you're doing because you get all these vehicles are gonna go to one centralized part of the you know to Tarpe, I believe. Yes, sir. And they come from all over the state, and you know where the vehicles are. So you better be careful, that guy. I know. So we'll take the I street superintendent and we'll take the fleet manager. And I, and, and like you said, twenty thousand dollars. That's. It's more than what he said, 5000 
We anticipate yeah. twenty thousand per ride, and hopefully we get a salt spreader for less than ten. Currently, our salt spreaders, uh, uh, the cinder spreaders, there are automatic feeds that are, and they come out of the sides of the dumps, and they're spreading it on either our sidewalk yes, or the I'm middle of the road. Thank you. And so these are designed to come out of one chute out of the back of the truck that'll follow the the road. Path. More like they do on the freeway instead of throwing it on the sidewalks like we do here. <laughs> yeah, be careful. That's Any other questions? Yeah, we're going to be careful. We will. Definitely. We better be. If not, like I said, we'll hold Laura responsible. <laughs> even though she's not even going to go, we'll hold Laura responsible. Laura and Mark. <laughs> yep. Any other questions? Nope. Just shop wisely. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll entertain sir. that motion to approve a purchase order for sixty thousand dollars for this public entity. Yeah, I make a motion to accept the uh, appeal for sixty thousand. Second. Second. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor yes. Vasquez. Councilor Lucero. Yes. Councilor Padilla. Yes. Thank you. You bet you. Walkways. Taco Bell and Walmart. Taco Bell. Wow. Time. Mayor. Council. City Manager. So uh, I have included a map. The blue line is the sidewalk that we want to, uh, that I'd like to put in in the business district. One of the blue complaints. Your map, bro. Mine ain't got Mine ain't got Theirs is not color. Oh, come on, Mark. Sorry. You get the color copy and tell us to look at it in black and white, dog. You should have colored them for us. There we go. Oh, that's what I thought. Sorry about that. <laughs> So we checked into the easement. We've got quite a bit of, uh, we got plenty easement. of easement. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. And so we've already lit up the walkway with LED lights. Those seven lights have already been installed and shopped around a little, little better. I got a little better at my job since the last time I asked. And so, uh, so we we cut the cost in less than half. So and we actually got more sidewalk out of the deal. So for $48,034.39, this will connect all the way from the intersection of Santa Fe all the way to Walmart. And this will all be ADA. Yep. We need something like that there, man. Mm -hmm. We've needed it for a while. Yeah. You know, and, and I've been doing a lot of traveling around. I was in 29 Palms, California this last week, and that city is growing so fast that they can't keep up. And there's no sidewalks. There's no AD compliance. They got nice curves, man. They got nice roads. But for a guy in a wheelchair, he's done. Okay? And, and so, I mean, we need to get this done everywhere we can. Any questions for Mark? What is the true price on this? Does that include tax, Mark? Yes, this is. is Construction cost. This is tax and CES fees are included. So the 48, 34, 39? Yes, sir. I'll entertain a motion for that right there. Yeah. Make, make a motion to uh, you have the sidewalk for the top of the Walmart for 48000 $34.39. To TLC. No, CES. Oh, CES. Yeah. CES, yeah. but CES is going to do the work? That's correct. Okay, that'll work. CES. Yes. I second. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor yes. Vasquez? Councilor Lucero? Yes. Councilor Padilla? Yes. Thank you, Council. Yes. Second one is uh, the road crew has gained some valuable experience um, watching these guys pave. We were out here the two days uh, helping, helping uh, TLC pave, and uh, we're confident that we can tackle the next project. The only thing we're not confident in is our concrete work because of the flow lines. That is pretty tricky. So this money is asking for three valley gutters and some curb and gutter repair along High Street. That way we can have uh, good flow lines. The lines, all right, here's, here's the colored map. <laughs> <laughs> So there's some blue lines that shows, oh, there you are. That is colored. The blue lines show where the curb and gutter, as well as the valley gutters are going. And then the red is where the new asphalt will go. And the red will be done by my car. Church, the school. Yes, sir. Yeah, all that water into the real. That's cool. 
Yeah, because right now you're getting the hell of a photo. Oh, so we anticipate the project will last about six to seven weeks because I anticipate the subgrade will be uh, exceptionally bad, just like when we opened up in this corner. There's nowhere for that water to go. It's been sitting under the road there for years. Yep. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion for the valley gutters. I make a motion for the uh, valley gutters. Cost of twenty nine thousand five hundred forty six bucks. Second. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor yes. Vasquez. Councilor Lucero. Yes. Councilor Padilla. Yes. Thank you, Council. Thank Mayor. you, Mark. Last one. Southwest Tele Solutions. Laura, the chief for the house. Where's the chief at? Oh, we got the lieutenant back there. So. I like lieutenants better than chiefs. We are asking the city council to approve. Uh, two purchases for internet services for the city hall and the police station and phone system for both both sites. You have um, the quotes in your packet and we've selected Sacred Winds. We've got quotes from CenturyLink, Sacred Winds, and Red Bolt. And the best option for the city was Sacred Winds. And so the internet would be 500 times two locations per month and a $2,000 non-reoccurring fee. The phone system is a one-time $5,836.26 for the equipment that goes with the phone system and then a monthly $1,094. $1,094.06. And we really didn't have to bring this to the council because it's underneath the cost prices of it. We wanted you guys to be aware of the contract change and what's going on, and we wanted your approval to do this. We didn't just want to go and do it on our own, okay? And that's why we're here. Okay? So on, the, on the equipment, there's a one-time equipment fee of $2,000. For the internet. For the internet. Uh -huh. For all the equipment. Yes. Now, who, who is going to maintain it? Uh, Century or Sacred Winds will be maintaining it along with our IT all person. Right. Okay, so. I don't see the other bits here. Was um, Red Bolt not very competitive? No, it was not. No. Um, they, Sacred Winds offered to provide the, uh, the fiber optics mm -hmm. here without a charge. Mm -hmm. Red Bolt was going to charge us 15000 to put the equipment wow. yeah. to get the lines wow. and the fiber here. Yeah. Okay. That would pay my whole front yard what I wanted to do from the back yard <laughs> to the front, man. <laughs> so this one-time equipment fee is only, it's going to be $2,000 and they, they will maintain it on the yes. contract? Mm -hmm. We're not going to have no special bills Later on, said, "Well, we forgot to tell you." This. No, we shouldn't unless we want to upgrade to something well, better that. and newer. Yeah. Well, I make a motion. Approve. For a second. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Yes. Councilor Vasquez. Councilor Lucero. Yes. Councilor Paya. Yes. Comments from the council, Sydney. I do. No, it's not going to be about anybody up here. Give me all the rest for two weeks. But I opened up my water, sewer, and garbage bill. Oh my goodness, it was today. It was today, and that young man who changed out, put the new equipment, he assured me everything was going to be cool, my bill wouldn't go up. $152.51 twice as much as it was before. <coughs> I'm having a heart attack. There may be a glitch. There may be there, a glitch. There better be a glitch. Anybody experiencing that? There better be a glitch. I didn't have mine changed yet, but I've already had this conversation with the guys that are changing meters out. I was there, it's almost doubled. Really? Wow. Yours too? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, have, and what's crazy a, is... A, a, I, I have the, the, um, those things put in the front of the house and my water from the rain goes into a rain barrel. I got that too. <laughs> and 
I use that for my flowers in the pot. I'm trying to be conservative. And I opened it up, $152.51. I almost came zooming over here, but I didn't. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm dreading seeing mine now because I know I use way more water than you. I, I have a garden and all kinds of stuff. I almost had a heart attack. Is this what our people are going to see? Well, if they are, I'll bet you that gallery's going to be filling up yep. real quick. <laughs> yeah, real we quick. know. We know your pain. <laughs> and we're working on it. So just so you know, when you open yours up and it's like, it what? Take a deep breath. Yeah. So we'll be checking on that to see if there's a problem with the billing system. And we just live again? across the street well, really, from one yeah. another. Yeah. No, that's well, they live right there. They live in the same area. Yeah. And zero they zero haven't done a meter at my house yet. And I'm zero okay. state. Yeah. I'm not. I, no, I'm and I'm like you. I, I use water, dude. I got trees, I got plum trees, I got fruit trees, I got a garden. So mine's going to be from 150 to 300, is what you're telling me. I will have a heart attack. That's over. And, I, 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 and I voted it, for this. There you go. That is sad. I voted for it. Anything else, Cindy? No, that's all today. May? Yes, I want to give uh, the speech department a uh, big hooray. You notice all the patching that's been going on? It's nice and smooth. I want to thank them for doing an excellent job. Yes. Anything else? Yep. Rick? So is it the software that's the glitch? It, 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 could be. <laughs> it better be. And my wife's been paying it online, so I haven't even seen the bill yet. Uh, She's probably not wanting me to see yeah. it. it. It could be, because I know Melissa has noticed some problems with some of the billing, so not all, but we'll be we'll be looking at them closely. Okay. Fred? Yeah, we're not at all. We're gonna start at our own baby. I believe right now on High Street. On July, high street. Yes. Right. right now on High Street when we do that project. Make sure. I know they did a good job around here, guys. The laying of the hot mix or whatever was great. But if your water is settling, or your water settles, it's gonna go right through and break it all that. So make sure that you have a drainage. Water running off. Yes. Right. Yep. yes. That's it. Laura, you got anything? Um, I wanted to thank Mark and Don. I believe they worked hard with uh, Wilson and Company to put a request before the Rio San Jose Flood District for money for our flood project, and we were awarded fifty thousand dollars. We should be obtained. Uh, so all that features. Yes. yes. Make my day. Good work. And then I wanted to announce that we did interviews today for the city clerk's position and. The committee selected O'Shea Hiley. All, all of the Hanamios who work for the city are not relatives of mine. <laughs> Make sure to that. Yes, none of them are related. We're not even related. So, um, congratulations, and O'Shea does a fantastic job. I got a couple of things. Jacobs, since we've had Siemens here, We've been getting boo red flags about Jacobs. They're never in the field. They found a water leak where we were losing almost 2 million gallons, guys, straight into the sewer system. Siemens found it right here on Charles Street. They found two more on 2nd Street, and Jacobs tells them, oh, yeah, we know about them, but we're waiting to do construction. What do we pay them to do? Okay. What do we pay them to do, guys? But we're gonna wait till we do construction. That's why the roads are falling apart, guys. That's why, and these guys, you never see them in the field. This is coming from our meter guys. That does this all over the country. They're telling us red flags like that. I know I've got Mark and I've got Laura on this big time, guys. And the next time when I call for this contract, I'm gonna hand you each a packet, thicker than your, in, right here, thicker than this. And then you guys are gonna justify why we are paying these people. Because I cannot find out why. And I'm tired of it, guys, and it's time to change it. And when we change it, we will not hire the same guys back. That's the bottom line. Because if we just change it to city employees and hire the same guys, we're going to have the same problems. And this has got to end. Now, this one here is the one that really kills me. I'm going to tell you guys a little story with recycling that happened to me on Tuesday. Okay, my daughter's going overseas. We had all kinds of cardboard at the house. I loaded a whole truck bed full of cardboard to the top. I had one, block, one 
bag of plastics. So I go over to the recycle bins and I pull in and there's a volunteer the tier there. Timmy's not there. I may never recycle again, okay? I've heard war, horror stories from all kinds of people about going over the recycling and how bad these people treat them, the volunteers. I got my first experience of it. Maybe they were being nice to me before because of who I was, okay? But now that they know that recycling's up to almost $60,000 a year, and when it hits the $60,000 mark, that's too much for me, then it'll be time to probably do away with that program. But what did it for me was this one right here. I went over there, I pulled up, I get out of my truck, I get my plastic bag, and I go and I throw my plastics in the bin, and I take my bag, I put it in the trash, and I go and I start to get my cardboards, and this person tells me, you can pull on down there by the bin, and throw it straight in the bin. Great, I thought, man, cool, I'll have to carry it down there. So I get in my truck, I drive down there, and as I'm getting out of my truck, this person opens my tailgate, takes out one piece of cardboard off the top and throws it on the ground. So I look at her, didn't say a word, because I know these people and how I've had to deal with them over the last years and all the horror stories I've heard. So I just looked at her and didn't say a word. And I threw all of my cardboards into the bin. Okay, you guys are gonna freak out on this. I close my tailgate and I start walking to my truck and she says, you got one more. And I said, you threw it there, you pick it up. She says, you bastard. That was her response to me. Now I will tell you right now, the first thing I did, it took every ounce of restraint in my body and intestinal fortitude that I have to control myself. Because if it would have been a man, I would have been arrested and we would have been calling GPD and the fire department to pick up an unconscious body. If it would have been a woman, she would have never spoke to me like that. Okay? So it was not a man, it was not a woman, it had to be a progressive. Okay? That's what it had to be. Okay? So I told her, I told her, you do not know me, you do not know my father, and you should never speak to me like this. And she started screaming at me about, I should pick the cardboard up. I mean, she threw it on the freaking ground. So I got my phone out, turned it on, and I said, would you repeat that for me? Please call me that again so I could get an actual record of this. She jumps in her car, rolls up her windows, and starts honking the horn like I'm going to attack her. This person's name is Ceres, something like that. Lives around the corner from me. We are going to have our citizens get treated like this by volunteers at a recycle joint for what? And we're paying almost $60,000 a year to go down there and get abused by these people? This is absolutely idiotic. And you wonder why nobody's recycling in this town? I found the answer out on Tuesday, guys. Right in my face. So, just for future references, when that program hits $60,000 a year that we're spending on it, I'm going to call for its execution. Because there's no reason that anybody in this town should be paying that kind of money to go get down there and get abused by volunteers. Volunteers, and where did she come from? That's my next question. Because she's not from Grants, because people from Grants do not treat people like that. And you damn sure don't call somebody a son of a bitch or a bastard at any time, period. I guarantee you guys, I am still, I'm shaking over this. The first thing I did was call the chief of police. Then I called the newspaper. Then I came over here to City Hall, ready to call Billy Moore and have him pick up every blue band down there and haul him back off. Because our citizens should not put up with crap like that to throw their trash. And I've heard these horror stories since I was out there manning the blue bins out here long before I ever became mayor. People came and they would tell me, Mr. Hicks, I'm not coming on the weekends. I'm coming to see you because those people are so damn rude. Well, I got my taste of it, guys. And I guarantee you, when it hits $60,000, I will call for the execution of that program because it's not helping us to send our citizens down there to be abused by a volunteer. It's sickening is what it is. And like I said, if it would have been a man, I would have been like a good Marine on Harry Hezbollah and I'd have tore him up, okay? And if it had been a woman, that had never spoke to me like that. Leaves one thing left. On that note, I'll call for an end of this meeting.
Motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Have a good night. Thank you very much for coming.